But in my first week back in the Pentagon, I did want to address my recent hospital stay and some of the issues around it. I'm recovering well, but as you can see, I'm still recovering. I'm still having some leg pain and doing physical therapy to get past it. I'm deeply grateful to my doctors and the nursing staff at Walter Reed, and I very much appreciate all the good wishes. But I want to be crystal clear. We did not handle this right and I did not handle this right. I should have told the President about my cancer diagnosis. I should have also told my team and the American public. And I take full responsibility. I apologize to my teammates and to the American people. Now, I want to make it very clear that there were no gaps in authorities and no risk to the Department's command and control. At every moment, either I or the Deputy Secretary was in full charge. And we've already put in place some new procedures to make sure that any lapses in notification don't happen. In the future, if the Deputy Secretary needs to temporarily assume the, off the duties of my office, she and several White House offices will be immediately notified, including the White House Situation Room. And so will key officials across the Department. And the reason for that assumption of duties will be included in writing. Now, I want you all to know that to know why this happened. I was being treated for prostate cancer. The news shook me, and I know that it shakes so many others, especially in the black community. It was a gut punch. And frankly, my first instinct was to keep it private. I don't think it's news that I'm a pretty private guy. I never like uh, burdening others with my problems. It's just not my way. But I've learned from this experience. So taking this kind of job means losing some of the privacy that most of us expect. The American people have a right to know if their leaders are facing health challenges that might affect their ability to perform their duties, even temporarily. So a wider circle should have been notified, especially the President. I'll take your questions today, but as you know, we've got an ongoing internal review as well as a DOD Inspector General review that we fully support. So I may have to discuss some aspects later. Now, let me back up a bit. As you know, on 22nd December, I had a minimally invasive procedure to cure me of my recently diagnosed prostate cancer. And then I hit some bad luck during what is usually a pretty easy recovery. On January 1st, I felt severe leg pain and, and pain in the abdomen and hip. And that evening, an ambulance took me to Walter Reed. The doctors found that I had several issues that needed treatment, including a bladder infection and abdominal problems. On January 2nd, I was also experiencing fever and chills and shallow breathing. The medical staff decided to transfer me to the critical care unit for several days for, for closer monitoring and better uh, team care by my doctors. And the Deputy Secretary assumed the functions and duties of my office, which happens when necessary. Her senior staff, my senior staff, and the joint staff were notified of this through our regular email notification procedures. And I never directed anyone to keep my January hospitalization from the White House. On January 5th, I resumed my functions and duties as secretary from the hospital. I was functioning, functioning well mentally, but not so well physically, and so I stayed at Walter Reed for additional time uh, for additional treatment, including physical therapy for some lingering issues with my leg. Now, I'm offering all of this as an explanation and not an excuse. I am very proud of what we've achieved at the department over the past three years. But we fell short on this one. As a rule, I don't talk about conversations with my boss, but I can tell you I've apologized directly to President Biden. And I've told him that I'm deeply sorry for not letting him know immediately that I received a heavy diagnosis and was getting treatment. And he has responded with a grace and warm heart that anyone who knows President Biden would expect. And I'm grateful for his full confidence in me. And finally, 
I also missed an opportunity to send a message on an important public health issue, and I'd like to fix that right now. I was diagnosed with a highly treatable form of cancer, a pretty common one. One in eight American men will get prostate cancer. One in six black men will get it. And so I'm here with a clear message to other men, especially older men. Get screened. Get your regular checkups. Prostate cancer has a glass jaw. If your doctor can spot it, they can treat it and beat it. And the side effects that I experienced are highly, highly unusual. So you can count on me to set a better example on this issue today and for the rest of my life. And again, I want to thank everyone for their well wishes and their great support. And with that, uh, I'll take your questions. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. First question will go to Associated Press. Lita. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. You said that uh, you never directed anyone to keep this from the White House. Did you direct your staff or others to keep it from the public and from other senior staff members? And if you did not, has anyone been disciplined for doing something that you did not tell them to do? And then just quickly on uh, Iraq and, and Syria, what is your response to the KH statement today that um, they are postponing or not doing any more attacks? Thank you. Good morning, Lita. Good morning. <laughs> to answer your question on whether or not I directed uh, my staff to conceal my hospitalization from anyone else, the answer is no. Um, in terms of uh, my, my response to KH's statement, um, we always listen to what people are saying, but we watch what they do. And, and again, uh, actions are everything. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens in the future. Okay, next question, we'll go to Fox. Jennifer. Um, sir, during that time that you were in the intensive care unit, there was an airstrike carried out, a drone strike against a, um, an Iraqi uh, leader of a militia. How is it that, um, do you regret that the authorities were not clear at that point? And um, what can you explain about what was going through your mind at that time? And then separately, there's been a lot of telegraphing about targeting and responding to the drone strike, so much so that the Iranian proxy leaders have left the country. Some are back in, in Tehran. Um, has there been too much telegraphing, or is the point not to kill any Iranian commanders? Um, <clears throat> regarding the strike on the 8th, Jen, um, that strike was, uh, was planned, and I, I had made recommendations to the President on, uh, on, on actions that we should carry out. Uh, and the President made a decision, uh, and based upon that decision, authorities were pushed down to the Central Command commander. Uh, and as you know, a strike like that, uh, you can't pick the precise time when that strike is going to take place. You want to minimize collateral damage. You want to make sure that you have everything right. And so uh, the uh, subordinate commander had the controls on that particular strike. So that, uh, I was very much involved in, the, in, the, in planning and the recommendations for that, and we knew that that would take place uh, uh, within a matter of days. Um, in terms of uh, telegraphing about strikes and whether or not uh, uh, people uh, leave or will have left, you know, I won't speculate uh, on, uh, on any of that. I would just tell you that, uh, you know, it, we will have a, a multi-tiered response. Uh, and, uh, and again, we have the ability to, uh, uh, to respond uh, a, number, in a, a number of times, depending on what the situation is. Okay. Let's go to Reuters. Phil? Um, what did your deputy know uh, about your condition, and when did she know it? Yeah, Phil, I, I think uh, in terms of what she knew and didn't know, I think we should probably let the, that uh, – come out of the review. I think uh, I, I won't speculate on what she knew and did not know uh, based upon what information was passed to, to her. Again, I think the details of that will come out of uh, one or both of those reviews. So. Okay. Gordon? 
Right, so Mr. Secretary, um, you say you didn't direct your staff to hide this truth or, or lie, but did you create a culture of secrecy that then uh, the staff kind of interpreted <clears throat> your, your desires or your um, intentions when it came to you getting sick? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I don't think I've created a culture of secrecy. Uh, I think uh, there will be uh, security officers, there will be other staff members who, who may perceive that uh, they're doing things in my best interest, and, you know, I can't, I can't uh, uh, predict or, or determine or ascertain what those things may be. I just know what I said and, uh, and did not say. And of course, uh, you know, I, I have a great staff, and, and they always uh, want to intend to do uh, the right things. But in terms of what m one may or may not have perceived at any one point in time, I won't speculate on that. So. Okay. Let's go to 